Welcome back. Those were the main headlines, no more details. In his speech before the Gender Security and Development Summit, President Abdel Fattah Sisi presented five main axes uh, to confront the region's crises. The axes are related to strengthening international cooperation and solidarity, as well as rising the region's capability in dealing with challenges to contain the repercussions of crises. President Sisi stressed the summit comes at an exceptional moment in the history of the world and the Arab region and carries a clear political significance for the development of partnership between Arab countries and the United States. The head of state stressed that global challenges increased in severity such as the coronavirus pandemic, climate change, food security and the outbreak of armed conflicts which cast their shadows over the world including the Arab region. He also highlighted the importance of intensifying uh, joint efforts to revive the Middle East peace process and to work on building societies within the basis of citizenship and democracy. The head of state stressed that laws of preserving water security must be reformulated. Concluding his word, the president also invited world and Arab leaders to participate in the upcoming COP27 set to be held in Sharm el-Sheikh. Addressing Gender Security and Development Summit, Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman called on Iran to cooperate and not to interfere in other countries' affairs. Jordan's King Abdullah II addressed the summit, saying that his country has uh, deep historic relations with Egypt, Iraq, and Gulf countries. Bahraini King Hamad bin Isa also addressed Jeddah summit. He said it's necessary to establish a Palestinian state according to two-state solution. He stressed that Yemeni crisis should be solved for the sake of Yemeni people, adding that maintaining security and stability in the region needs cooperation. Addressing the summit, Qatari Emir Tamim said that there is no stability or development while disputes still exist. He added that crises and wars in any region threaten all the world. He underscored that achieving stability in the Gulf is a must. He added that Palestinian cause should be solved in the light of global threats. Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al qadimi also addressed the Gender Security and Development Summit. He underscored that Ukrainian crisis needs intensifying efforts to guarantee food security. Kuwaiti Crown Prince also addressed the Gender Summit, calling for achieving Palestinian state and ending crises in the region. U.S. President Joe Biden said on Saturday the United States would remain an active, engaged partner in the Middle East. Uh, addressing Gender Security and Development Summit, Biden told the Arab leaders that the United States is investing in building a positive future of the region in partnership with all countries in the region. Biden said that the United States will remain an active, engaged partner in the Middle East. He said that the U.S. still has the ability to counter security threats and make new alliances. He also asserted that more stability in the Middle East is for the interests of the U.S. He also announced one billion U.S. dollars in food aid for the Middle East. Biden also told the summit U.S. is committed to ensuring Iran never gets a nuclear weapon and will continue diplomatic efforts to stop its endeavors. He also added that the United States is looking forward to upcoming COP27 in Egypt and that he sees more investment agreements in the region to serve the countries. On the sidelines of the Gender Security and Development Summit, President Al Fattah Sisi held a meeting with his American counterpart, Joe Biden, where the American president stressed that the U.S. administration is looking forward to enhancing coordination and strategic consultation with Egypt in the upcoming stage. The head of state also held meetings with a number of Arab leaders. Details. President Abdel Fattah Sisi discussed food security and disruptions to energy supplies with American President Joe Biden as they met for the first time on Saturday on the sidelines of an Arab summit in Jeddah. Presidential spokesperson Ambassador Bassam Radi said the two leaders also addressed ways to revive a Palestinian peace process. As the American president pointed out to Egypt's pivotal role in the Middle East under the wise leadership of President Sisi, which represents a key pillar for maintaining peace and security in the region. 
The discussions also covered Egypt's efforts to secure a legally binding agreement over the operation of the so-called Ethiopian Dam to preserve water and national security of Egypt, coinciding with protecting the interests of uh, all three countries, Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia. Meanwhile, the two heads of state tackled a number of regional and international files of mutual interest as President Sisi stressed the strategic relationship between Egypt and the United States and announced his readiness to take it to a whole new level. Biden said the U.S. administration is looking forward to achieve frameworks of bilateral cooperation and enhancing coordination and strategic consultation with Egypt in the upcoming stage. Also in Jeddah, President Sisi met with Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al-Kadhimi, where he underscored Egypt's fixed policy to boost its Arab and national role, offering all kinds of support to the Iraqi people on all levels. For his part, al-Kadhimi hailed Egypt's supporting role for Iraq and described it as strategic on both regional and international levels. President Sisi also affirmed that Egyptian Kuwaiti cooperation is a vital part of continued regional stability during his meeting with Kuwaiti Crown Prince Sheikh Mash'al Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah. Sisi also affirmed Egypt's keenness to closely coordinate with Kuwait towards development in the Middle East as a major priority for the Egyptian foreign policy. Saudi Arabia's Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud uh, then held a press conference uh, by the end of the Jeddah summit in which he stressed that uh, he was not aware of any discussions on a Gulf Israeli Defense Alliance and that the kingdom was not involved in such talks. The Saudi prince told reporters that Riyadh's decision to open its airspace to all air carriers had nothing to do with establishing diplomatic ties with Israel and was not a precursor to further steps. Details. Minister of Foreign Affairs of Saudi Arabia, Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud, said that there is no such thing as an Arabic NATO. This came during a press conference at the conclusion of the Jeddah Security and Development Summit which was held in the presence of the American President Joe Biden. Bin Farhan said that the kingdom's hand is extended to Iran to reach normal relations, pointing out that the talks that took place with Iran were positive, but did not reach any results. He also noted that there were no messages from Iran to the Jeddah summit, stressing that dialogue and diplomacy are the only solution to Iran's nuclear program. Furthermore, the Saudi foreign minister said that no type of military or technical cooperation with Israel was raised or discussed and that there is no such thing as an Arab NATO, reiterating that there was no discussion of a defensive alliance with Israel. Additionally, he said that the joint Arab action system has reached a stage of maturity, adding that we know what we want and we know how to achieve it. We do not wait for anyone to fulfill our needs. He added that they did not discuss the issue of oil production at the Jeddah summit and the OPEC Plus continues to work to assess the markets and what they need. Bin Farhan also said that the U.S. remains our main strategic partner, stressing that the kingdom's partnership with America is old and continuous, and the agreements they signed with America did not come to fruition overnight. Furthermore, he touched on the decision to open Saudi airspace for the civil aviation, stressing that this decision does not mean any prelude to the decision. Moving on, he said that Saudi Arabia's maximum production capacity is 13 million barrels and also called for a balanced approach to reach zero neutrality, adding that many countries cannot convert to renewable energy quickly. Regarding the global food crisis, as a result of the war in Ukraine, Bin Farhan said that they discussed the issue of food and grains, adding that the level of coordination between the Arab countries will increase to ensure food security. Minister of Foreign Affairs and President-designate of COP27, Samir Shukri, discussed with the British Prince of Wales via phone Egypt's vision and goals on the 27th session of the Conference of the Parties in the UN uh, to the UN Framework Climate Change Convention, UNFCCC. The call was part of current consultations with all countries and parties concerned on preparations for COP27 to be hosted by Egypt in the Red Sea city of Sharm el-Sheikh in November.
Minister Shukri hailed the UK viral role at COP26, praising efforts exerted by Prince Charles to promote global climate action. Shukri expressed Egypt's keenness to work with Prince Charles in the coming period to increase the participation of the private sector in global efforts to face climate changes through climate change-linked initiatives.